in English. Oh, okay. Okay. Well. <laughs> Good afternoon. So I'm really, really happy to be here today and to present our speaker, Senor Polino, or Dr. Senor Polino, uh, who received his PhD uh, certificate just a few months ago. Uh, Senor did his uh, PhD in our department. Uh, he started as the uh, uh, master's student in geography here in this building. And he was working on mapping uh, forests and forest conditions uh, in relation to uh, climate and environmental factors. And he, um, so he started on land. He was not working in the sea. And uh, he learned about the School of Marine Sciences and the Department of uh, uh, Marine Geosciences and decided that he wants to jump into the sea. And he started looking for a PhD. But it was a bit difficult because he didn't have a, a master thesis in sciences, it was in geography. But I think that I, it was possible to recognize that uh, Semyon has a lot of abilities in understanding the data, in understanding structural analysis, the wide perspective. And then we decided to give him a chance. And uh, since then, he was, he was independent, totally independent, working on uh, changes in human activities in the Mediterranean Sea and the Ecuador. And uh, I was his, his supervisor, but a very significant and main supervisor was a uh, professor Noam Levin from the Deep University, who is a, a very strong GIS person. Um, so I really had a great opportunity to work with both of them, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, today, Simeon, uh, he's going to finish his PhD. He moved to the Technion and worked in, in the uh, Kameri, uh, the coastal and marine engineering um, uh, facility, institute. The institute that they have there. And now he's starting a postdoc uh, in the department, working on risk, risk analysis uh, around ports in Israel using uh, drones and other uh, autonomous uh, vehicles in the marine environment. So I welcome you. Thank you. Uh Uh, nice to, to see you here. Um, and then uh, before I start, let's, uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, stop me, ask me, because it's mostly for you, not for me. I know this uh, stuff. Um, so ask me the question, because if you have interesting questions, it's also something that we can discuss here. And uh, maybe someone will raise any idea for future research and uh, to promote our research, uh, understanding our oceans and the coast. So this is the title. With, this is the title that I have submitted in my proposal. The idea was uh, I'm not directly coming come to you with the, with the uh, idea. Let's uh, try to investigate the oceans because. Before I worked in the team, planning team that made the Israeli EZ zone, we collected a lot of GIS data, spatial data of uh, construction DTC, cables, uh, uh, pipelines, to so try to map the different conflicts, uh, try to understand how environment collaborate with the engineering. Later, I worked three years in the Haifa port, in the company that uh, deals with multi beam single beam, different type of uh, bathymetry surveys. Um, and after that, I'm coming to retire. It's basically, it was a uh, look for students for the it, uh, marine pollution. Yeah. And we start with our conservation and conversation, what is the idea, and the yeah. buoys, there was a period of the two buoys of Timor. Yeah, they're getting out of the ports. Yeah, yeah. in the ports. Okay. So in this, uh, how, somehow we are uh, arrived to this 
title, and the title was because humans are active in the sea, and most of the such activities, the humans trying to be uh, not uh, not seen, let's say. That's, if I'm in the sea and then trying to, let's say, catch the fish, I'm perfect that no one see me, no one know me. I'm going there, coming back, and uh, trying to be not seen. So this is the idea how in the, how we try, how how we can map human activities in sea. The idea was first to concentrate in the Mediterranean Sea. Later we understand that time can expand to the global overview to do it. And they are drivers. What do you mean drivers? If I see in some place that there is increase in fishing activity or a shipping activity or pollution activity, I try to understand why there is increase and in another place probably there is decrease. I try to, to, to explain it statistically because it's not enough to say here is rising, here is decreasing. I try I need to come and say, okay, this is with significantly. Statistically significant change. My supervisor was Professor Vital Bookman, that you know, and Professor Noam Levin from the Hebrew University. No. Ah, here. Okay. And Originally, I, I, the idea was to start from the opening of Suez Canal. Why? Because human activity in the, this part of the Mediterranean Sea significantly increased by increasing of the shipping. Uh, but later, I revealed that there is no data or minimum data. I'm not really can create a special temporal analysis. For statistics, we need enough data because we can do linear correlation if there is only 20 observations. We need a lot of observations. So, so the idea was to describe temporal and spatial changes in human activities in the Mediterranean Sea or in the ocean. There are trends by estimating their significance uh, and the reasons for their changes. So this is the objective of the research, of the PhD research. And I'm trying to, trying to understand, okay, what is the research done already to publish something? And I found maps like this. This map show us the human pressure, human activity pressure on the oceans. If you're looking here on the Mediterranean Sea or Black Sea, we can see that in this time, this, let's say this second, when we are taking different types of human activities like shipping, like uh, fishing, like uh, extraction, something from the seabed and, and others, and we're creating multiple matrix. We are multiplying the parameters. This is the map that we are, we can see. You can see these lines that represent the shipping routes. You can see these lines that when they represent the fishing efforts. Also here, this is the map. And this is showing us in some statistic, static position, but we are also interesting in trends. And this is the map showing us the trends. Now you can see that not all the Mediterranean is suffering from the increase of human activity. This is the area, why do you think this is the area of the uh, Eastern uh, Levantine, Levantine area is also in fact, huge amount of oil activities is here. Huge number of seismic activities. Everything is creating a, a lot of impact on marine environment. I mean, huge impact on the sea surface in X, Y, let's say, directions, and also in the Z and the depth. Here, that's because one of the main, main reasons, there's a long, uh, in, Oil activity, oil and gas activity. So this was my concept. Trying to understand, okay, I don't need to create new maps like this, but maybe I need to do go deeper in each parameter and try to understand what's going on there in each of each one. And here's my first paper. We we analyzed 
partial and temporal analysis of oil field events in the Mediterranean Sea. I collect data from different sources of oil pollution events, such as fields that comes from big tankers, tanker that grounded, the, uh, there's some leakage of the oil, a thousand of tons of oil spilled out, and also I analyze the fields that are deliberate. Vessels that crossing now threats and now going to the Black Sea. On the way, they can uh, spill some liquids that uh, include hydrocarbons. The spills can reach a distance of 50 kilometers in length. It's also a type of pollution. And the idea was to understand what is what where is it? Because when I saw graphs of the oil spills. If you are going to the Google and writing oil spills in the world, you will see graphs that show in degrees. But the picture is another, not, this is not really what's going on. And I try to understand, okay, we, we are taking the water column and we are taking probably molecules of hydrocarbons. What is the source of the hydrocarbons? So, all the same person. I mean, from the natural oil seeps, that most of you who is dealing with the geology or investigating, you are most, most of you know this type of the, of the oil that coming to the sea. This oil, let's say it's okay for the marine run because it's coming slowly. The marine run, you are know how to adopt it, and this is not harmful to the marine run, it's not damage. But humans, what we are creating, the 53 in other persons, that divided for transportation, pipelines, tankers, illegal discharges. This is not good for the marine world because it's coming from like a catastrophic event. Okay. This is one of the main understanding of was in my research. And for me, it was interesting to investigate the mostly illegal discharges in tanker space. Why? Because tanker space, it's accidental. It's like a car uh, accident. In most of the case, it can uh, prevent it. But illegal discharge, when you're putting your uh, finger on the, some button and you're dropping uh, oil to the sea, when you're crossing the sea, and you think that no one sees you, this is the deliberate. We can eliminate. We can do something there. By this, by the showing the maps, showing the data that someone polluting them. And this is the map of the tanker spills. The red squares representing high number of the oil pollution, oil events. You can see that most of these pollution events and the squares, they are real coastal area. That means tanker spills. Close to the facilities when tank is operating, connected to the facility, there are the areas with high potential risk for pollution. A few numbers of events that take place out the not close to the core, but to the coast. When we are looking on the map of the illegal pollutions, when a ship uh, crossing the uh, ocean of the sea, you can see that they are located far from the coast in comparison with the tankers. Why? Because they don't want that you see them. Someone see them. They don't want to. Why? Because if I need now the ballast water from my ship to do something, I need to come to the port, pay money for the cleaning of my ballast water. I don't want, I prefer to. Probably I prefer to do it in the sea. And this is what really what happened in the in the ocean. How did you understand that uh, some of them are legal, some of them are illegal, some of them are accidental? What is this? Every spill that you can, every spill that you see on the satellite image, and you see the source of the image, or the source near the near the end of the of this line. No, I am going to in another way. <laughs> this is the data is coming from satellite images. Satellite image analysis, satellite images. Images that comes from a description. People report about about them. 
that of this is complicated film. One of the main focus was to, to understand the data and to find, let's say, the noise of the data, what is the manipulated, what is not manipulated. But the, your question, if you see, if you see in the city, on the satellite image something anomaly like this, it's natural or not? No. And that one? What it could be? It could be type of oil seek. Because if you see something like this, you can say, okay, there is some aquifer, aqu 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 how do you call it? Uh, the worth of the oil. And this is a natural uh, geometry of nature, something natural on the sea surface. This line is not natural. So delivery discharges, it's like this line, this type of pollution on the sea surface. Something like open the sea and went along yeah. and it just like uh, in this, yeah. exactly. Okay. And here you can see that uh, in overall, we are talking about in three years, it's not really three years, but three years, more than 2000. So in one year, we can speak about 600 old spins, and it's based just on one satellite. Image that crossing this area once per day based on Sentinel One. So we are covering the ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, just maybe five percent of the time. So think how much data we are missing here in our observation, and how much of the pollution events we are events we are missing on our ability to map. Later, I need to understand, okay, why in some countries or in these areas there is a high number of oil spills, in another country less. One of the main reasons for the oil spill, deliberate oil spills, is liner shipping connectivity use. It's index that showing how much country, for example, Israel, the Haifa port, connected to another port. If the number of the, this index for example, for Haifa from zero to 100, 100 is the most connected port in the world. Zero is not for port, this port is not connected with no one. If Haifa is 80 index, it means it's connected with most of the ports in the world. Most of the countries sending to Israel their ships, their ships are coming to Israel water, and there is increasing probability they are being polluted including these waters near the near our port. Number of ratified IMO conventions, countries, IMO is, is a international maritime organization. This is the legislation organization in the world that's providing our for the world the laws of the sea. Israel is uh, ratified only 20 conventions uh, from I think 70 conventions. And the opposite picture here is less country signs ratified conventions. There is a higher probability for lower oil pollution. Don't ratify the IMO convention. There is, you will increase your probability for cleaner sea. We are looking for the opposite. Yeah? If you are ratifying something, you are increasing the loss for the sea. We, we are hope for the cleaner sea. But the statistics showing another. And here is another parameters, their uh, correlation rates and their significance. So if you are planning now trying to improve or investigate the oceans, your seas, your eases, this is more or less statistics that will be accepted to the other part of the world, to my, my opinion. The second world, the second paper. Uh, the start, start of looks or looking on the anchorage areas. Anchorage areas is the area where the ships waiting for the entering the port. The way the uh, ships can wait there two weeks, one one month. Some of them not waiting; they are crossing directly to the port. But there is another part of high density of shipping activity that's not monitored. We saw them. We saw them that they, they are here. Well, from Haifa, we can see obviously that there is a lot of number of ships, but if the sound of ship dropping something now, we cannot see it. And there is a high presence of the ships. And my idea was, okay, let's increase our 
capabilities of observations of this area. And one of the time that we are limited in our understanding is during the night time. Let's say we want how we are mapping now the number of ships. We can go to the AIS, marine, marine map of the ships, and to see what is the number of the ships. But what if we have no data? What if we want to understand the monthly statistic? What is the number? The, 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 if it's, it's public, but it's not data that, can, that you can analyze. Because if you want to analyze the raw data, you need to, to purchase this data. It's called data pod, and you need a lot of algorithms to, uh, to, to maintain this data before you try, you can uh, get statistical, for example, what is the number of the vessel that was in the pod? You can, in a few clicks, get a statistic, what is the number of vessels that was in anterogeny of hydroport during the uh, December month of 2022. You can, you can, it's complicated. If you now paying, for example, $500, the marine traffic will do it for you. Here the idea is how we take that data is perfect, it's not just visualization in real time. You can in real, in real time, you can see. But you can go back and create statistics long term, understand what how the temporal trends in some port change during the time. So I try to understand how I can to put the, the big data outside and to create something that's more feasible in operative or operative, operative, operative for the analysis of the shipping presence in the anchorage areas. And I understand that one of the interesting sites is night. During the night, the West is creating lights. I can map, measure the amount of lights in, in this way to say what is the number of the vessel in the anchorage areas. This is Iranian vessel that operates before in Red Sea. And this is the question um, that's try to be not seen on the satellite images, but every vessel using lights. Because if you are going on the vessel, you need lights. You don't want to fall to the sea. So they are using the lights. Here the satellite images of here is the Fuji report. It's UAE and the encouragers of the tankers. Most of the oil coming from here. Most of the tank is like it's like a taxi station. Tankers from different countries from here coming to here. The another tankers coming to here. They try connected to each other. You are losing the connection of the who is the father of the oil. And from here, they are going to another different direction with no, with, without the source of the oil. Here's the map of this area that showing the nighttime lights. So you can see that this is the coastal light of the city. Here is some uh, degradation of the light towards the sea. Here you see that there is a deconnected light that's Coastal light not affect the light of the, the encourager. In here, you maybe can see the uh, white dots. It's vessels on the Sentinel One. Sentinel One is our uh, synthetic aperture radar. It's not depend on the weather. We can every time to see what's going on the sea surface. This is great tool to calculate and to understand who what is the presence of the futures on the sea surface. This day yes, that you have uh, talked before, we can see the lo exact location of the vessel. We can uh, click on one of the vessel to know who, what is the ID of the vessel, from where to where the vessel is sailing, what is the size, different parameters. But I want to understand, okay, what is the human pressure? What is the human activity in this area, in long term? And 
such data, it's complicated to analyze. We need a company with huge number of servers uh, of the developers that can analyze this data. Okay, so we I'm taking the anchorage areas, anchorage areas in the world. I'm taking data from the satellite that monitoring the sea surface of the Earth during the night time. That's mapping the, the amount of the light produced by humans, in our case, it's by the ships. <coughs> and before I'm going to develop simulation <coughs> statistics, I need to answer the question. Does this method could be implemented in the different parts of the world? So the answer is yes, because when they try and put different countries in their rental generators, Areas and their amount of lights. I can see that most of the countries, as the number of the anchorage areas increase, the amount of the lights increase linearly. This means if I'm developing something now, I can implement it in different areas, not just in Israel, with the correlation of the good enough, it's strong correlation, it's significant correlation, but based on the, the, the enough uh, sample size, this means I can use it in other parts. Like uh, monitoring tool? It's like exactly monitoring tool, so because I'm saying, okay, I can, I can myself analyze the uh, data, huge data. I need a lot of uh, computer power. And I don't need real time, I need statistics, most monthly, uh, daily, maybe, maybe weekly. And this is the idea how I'm creating some uh, proximity for the numbers of the vessels in the areas. You are saying that between like uh, summer and winter? Don't between different. summer and winter, between Haifa and like, Pujara, different parts. It doesn't matter the weather. Like, no, it's, it's matter, but here I'm using monthly data. So, for example, this month is problematic month in Israel because we have three weeks of weather of uh, rains and the cloud days. One of the data that I use here is map. It's like mathematics math, map of the cloudness, uh, cloud uh, uh, present, the cover, yearly cover, cover um, cloud cover. So. I saw that what is the area they are problematic. I, there is some we developed short algorithm that minimize the impact of the clouds. So if the ship like wants to show all the oil and all the... No, this is not good. But if you want to understand what is the impact of the COVID, for example, on the statistics of the ports, you can use it. Or you have any any significant change of on the on the, in the operation? You're open search command. Your device uh, opening the search. Your uh, increase the depth of the search. There is increase in the shipping activity in the port. This is the tool. Don't take the, the data AIS because we don't not really know how to do it. But here we can do it. Some of lights. I'm, it's me, we are, I take here data of sound of, of lights daily, monthly, and calculate what is the amount of lights for each for, for each port. So the red icons represent us the areas, the ports most active in the world, because not, no, no, sorry, the anchorage areas with the higher number of the vessels in their ports. So, some of the ports probably they are really efficient with their operation. That the the vessels not waiting in the anchorages. It's in here in the Pojara, for example, you can see the hill, huge number of the vessels that in most of the time waiting outside. So this is the one of the data uh, I'm trying to analyze. Have you found each vessel? I'm not found each vessel. I'm trying to create proximity measurements for the number of the vectors based, based on satellite images. Yeah. The, the intensity of light, so the more light you have, the you have more both like Yeah. With the increase of sound of the type of 
no está de comprar de 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 So, so, so in your metric there was a showing correlation between the intensity of light and number of concrete and concrete points of the country. Yeah. <coughs> and you know to translate uh, the light intensity yes. to number of points? This is the ratio dealing with how to transform from the intensity of light to the number of the vessel. So we saw the image of the start of the sun to present this sun to you. Here you can see the change over the time because we want to know if the port in the last in the sun time period the shipping activity increased or decreased. So here you can see some of the ports during this period, the number of the vessel activity decreased in their decorator. Here you can see in Australia. Here we can see the coast of China. That we know the chicken there is always increasing. By the way, it also increased during the COVID. So it's also interesting map to how we can understand the shipping activities. As a, by the way, shipping is responsible for 95% of the economy. So this is the map of economy, global economy. Uh, yes, there is parameters for the co local economy, but not the port, but the country. Yeah. Yes, the, the, the country. It's on the paper and not still. And one of the idea was okay, if I can see the global map, can I see map the uh, shipping activity in the port? So here's the values, normalized values of the satellite lights. Here's the number of the number of ships that counted from the Sentinel-1. Total export of the Santos port, Brazil. Number of the wait, uh, ships waiting in the port, more than 72 hours. Why? Uh -huh. Because the satellite covers the Earth per day. It's total Earth. It's providing the full image of Earth every day. If in some there was a cloud day or two cloud days, it's mean I'm missing this vessel or I'm missing this area. So we take the minimum of 32 hours the ships wait. It means I at least once or two I call it this in this uh, vessel was was a uh, match. And the number of the specific vessel, uh, specific vessel. So I'm trying to see what is going on? What does the lights number of the amount of light correlate with the number of ships? And we can see from the most of the period, it correlates. Here something happened. The correlation is wrong. If you have three days of cloud, you want to have I but it's month. Two days it's still enough between to, to create the average of month. But what is the reason? If you look here, the number of the ships that are waiting less than 72 hours decreased. What it means, the efficiency, for example, of the port probably uh, rise. Do I, they, the vessels not waiting in the, near the port. They are coming and directly going to the inside the port. So this is the reason why I, can, I don't see them now in the lights, in the nighttime lights. And this last paper that's from I hope for in the, 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 the new, new, new time I will submit it. And the idea is to assess <coughs> the statistical changes in the shipping, uh, also in the coastal areas, in the anchorage areas, using the areas data. I am taking the same anchorage areas, the same ports, <coughs> and I want to understand. How the ship COVID with different limitations impact on the shipping activity of the country, <laughs> the number of the vessels, the type of the vessel, how did it impact Israel, how did it impact Mediterranean, 
ה-OECD נכנס גלובל, אין more or less similar analysis, but different type of data. Here you can analyze it as, it's more or less, what I'm saying, that it's more problematic. It's here, from here I'm bringing it. So here you can see, again, two types, three types of the points. The points that are hot, red, this is the areas, despite the COVID, the shipping activity is weak. Again, you can see that most of China, most of the ports, the number of the vessels, despite the limitation that the COVID, in, in the number increase, take a look what happened to Europe. It stopped. The shipping is stopped. The vessel is not coming. Most of the vessels somewhere here. You can see the points that are with the hot colors. This is the area of the activity of the shipping during the COVID. This is the impact, first impact of the COVID. These points are black points. This is the point where the statistics are not significant. So for me, I'm not taking them into account because I can't describe something if it's not significant. I only deal with points that are significant change. So this map also again showing us the economy, how economy impacted by the COVID because economy depends only on the shipping. Your, uh, ship, uh, your economic activity. 
You are not loading and unloading the goods. You are not have export and mix, export and import of the physical. You need the, the, the movement. If I understand. But it's not an indication to export and import. It's no, an indication. If a boat cannot just stay in the entrance area, it costs money. It costs costs money. It costs yeah, money. Yeah, sure. It's yeah. money. It's, it's a, not a parking lot. Or... But it's no, so it shows that the most of the activity is here. They are coming for a reason. Because oh, country, yeah. what is going on with the COVID? You need a test, you need the two weeks. So you are preferring to stay in your country and operating in your country between your ports. Ah. In opposite, I'm not going now to Israel because I come to Israel and need the certifications, I need to check, so I need that. So it's not export and import. It's it's to show it, it decreased the distance of commercial or we commerce. China. Here, most of the Ch yes, yeah. China switched the the the, the train most to, to local trade to local activity. And the, by the way, I show I also analyzed connectivity between the countries. China increased the connectivity with the Africa during this period and with the Arabic countries here, but it's stopped. Connection with the Europe and the Mediterranean Sea, because there is like you know, the vision of the regulations that they say, okay, maybe we are actually to deal with the countries that not asking so any the type of restriction and the certification. So this is the change, and this is the recovery here. You can see that most of the Mediterranean coming back. There are the, the shipping is coming back. Uh, most of the world comes back, and the uh, but China increased again, and uh, they are really uh, enjoy this period because their shipping it's increased okay. significantly. Is this a comparison it's, compared to 2020 to 2021? Yes, exactly. It's different so between these two years. Okay, so we saw the global map, and here we can see the normalized data of different types of the vessel types, for example, bulk carriers, general cargo, oil chemical tankers, and some of the parameters related to COVID. And the, the blue pop dots, you can see what is the meaning of them. So you can see here, more or less, similar trends. Here, we have the first wave of the COVID, the second wave, the third wave. And we can see with the increase in some, with some parameters of the, in this case, of the shock wave, which is like a shock wave. Where we can see the case fatality rates increase, we can predict in the future, let's say, what is the probably impact on the shipping, because shipping is vulnerable in industry. And we want to prevent the future impact of the shock waves like COVID, like wars, like uh, wastes that stuck in the Suez Canal. We want to understand what will be the impact on some shockwaves. So COVID is a great example to understand how shipping uh, affected by such shockwaves. And when we're taking such, you are creating such uh, statistics, this help us to understand what of the shipping sectors are uh, suffering from any type of increase or decrease in some of the Affecting parameters. But okay. yeah. no, I, I don't see can can you show what you see? Uh, I don't see can... here we are talking about the increase in some of the COVID related parameters. Here somewhere in January, February. And you they are reaching their maximum in the April, May 2020. But the decrease of the shipping not related directly to the maximum. 
it's, it's impacted even before. It means if we are taking the another wave of the of the COVID, the impact on the shipping will be before. It means the first first the title on the newspaper increase in the COVID the fatality in the, some country. You are not waiting for the results. It's good enough to stop the shipping. Shipping uh, immediately is stopping the activity. They are not waiting for the official results. It means that not really maximum effect. Something, something another effect the shipping decrease. Secondly, you can see who affected. You, you can see that most of the sectors here is affected. And for example, the passenger not really affected here. Passengers somewhere from the peak, from the maximum here, continue to decrease. The question is, if it decreases because something another, it's whether it's global phenomena, something happened, but the, the globally shipping, uh, passenger shipping, not directly affected, but where the affected skill, because probably they are trying to take some actions to recover the passenger activity because it's the ship, the, this industry costs a lot of money. That's, they are losing money. Only can, can, can collapse uh, if uh, passengers not uh, operating. More or less same statistic we can do for ports, not just for the shipping sectors, for the ports. We can see what of the ports working more or less, let's say, together, because we can assume that Shanghai in Ningbo, Ningbo ports should represent more or less same statistic, but Rotterdam ports is more close to Amber, there should be more or less, again, more or less a similar in their number of defenses, but not with the Shanghai. So it means if you want to understand what is going on Rotterdam, we can maybe look on the Antwerp and to correlate, to create a correlation and to understand what, how they are, uh, what is the, is the mutual reaction or something that we can use in the future to predict activity. This is the for, yeah, great, true. Thank you. Because there is a So thank you. Thank you. We have some kind of questions. The situation between the ship is based on time or No, this is based on the AIS data. It's similar, it's the same. Same data used to map uh, by once from the satellite, it's mapping the amount of light, secondary, based on the GPS on the vessels. Uh, yes, it's like GPS. So the star, what does it measure? Star? No, star is the type of data, satellite data. It's active satellite that's sending energy, take it back. In the it's uh, mapping the reflection, the intensity of reflection. Sea surface reflect different type of reflection than the ship. The different signature. So you see the ship based on the different reflection. Yeah. And also the space. Yeah. You see them also. Yeah. Side. Everything that's different, <laughs> different uh, uh, texture. parameter texture create different signature. Inactive systems. General cargo, you can see it's affected, <laughs> but it increased probably when the fully vaccinated, you see, still fully vaccinated, it starts to increase because still this is time of the vaccination development. Still, countries start to use vaccination, 
and general cargo increase. Probably this is the correlation, but this is a lot of data for another edition of the piece. I stop here because I need to stop power. <laughs> To submit the material, yeah. Is, yeah. But the, the idea, yes, yeah, it's you say, okay, Amazon, how the Amazon may uh, affect it and how they are uh, reacting. So, yeah, maybe they, you think, yeah, for example, oil tankers. This is one of the sectors that are significantly affected. Why? Because the, 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 the usage of the oil is increased. Russia, uh, Put money to countries that uh, uh, able to to save the, the oil because they they can stop the production of the oil. They need to do something with the oil. So take money, but take my oil. This is what the situation. Yeah. Yeah.